that you? Russ! I don't have long. I'm from the future. Wait, wait, wait a sec. You're telling me you built a time machine out of a Mercedes? Yes, the VW failed its flux capacitor emissions test. But enough of that, the future of you and YouTube hangs in the balance. Why? What happens in the future? Do I, do I buy a BMW or something? I, I can't answer that. In the future, the trio have left Top Gear. Chris Harris no longer makes regular videos on YouTube. YouTube is full of brainless morons who know nothing about cars and all they do is make clickbait videos. This is heavy, but where do I come in? I'm, I'm just a normal accountant. No, quit your day job. You and a handful of others will make a difference. Look, this is crazy. I don't understand. and I don't even get, what is this car? This is the new A-Class and it revolutionizes the way we interact with cars in the future. <laughs> You're telling me this is an, an A-Class? Listen, I, I've seen A-Classes. That, that does not look like an A-Class. Next you'll tell me Lamborghini are gonna make an SUV. I mean, uh, You're shitting me, right? Oh crap. Look, Fraz, I've run out of time. Remember my words. Take this, keep it safe. But Gull, how, how are you gonna get to 88 miles per hour in my drive? With this baby, I don't need roads. Hey Mercedes. How can I help you? Take me to 2018. Select an entry, please. One. Start of route guidance. Car reviews, huh? Who would have thought? So here it is, the new A. So this is the new A200 in AMG line form. But the question you're asking is, why is it so revolutionary, if you like, in terms of the car industry? The way I best described it, and I'm giving you my conclusion to the review right at the start, is it was like the jump from Nokia to iPhone. And interaction with devices, as our devices become more and more capable with more and more technology in them, the interaction that we have with those devices becomes more important. And the one that really changes things for the car is the use of voice and AI. Now we've all experienced it in our phones with uh, Siri, Cortana, etc. And it's not as groundbreaking because the best use of a good smartphone or the best way to interact is via touch, it's actually touching the screen. That's not necessarily true in the car. And I remember a great lecture I had in uni with regards to UI design, this is what, 14, 15 years ago now, that really stuck with me from this particular lecturer where he said, just because you've got internet connectivity, you can install it into any device, doesn't mean that you should, for example, put a browser or an internet browser onto a fridge. That's not useful. Don't do it just because you can. For a fridge, you'd wanna know, okay, I'm out of milk, let's connect to the internet and order some new milk. And that really stuck with me. So whenever I saw internet browsers inside a command system of a Merck, for example, I'd be sitting there thinking, who the heck would ever use that? I'm sure none of you have ever used a browser that is available in most modern cars today. So it's an example of tech that's there just for the sake of tech being there. Uh, another one recently in the M5, we tried that weird volume up, volume down gesture system. Again, who is gonna do that when they're driving? You've put gestures in there just for the sake of having gestures. But good technology and good UI comes when you're coming at it from a problem solving basis, trying to solve a problem and then you create technology that helps solve a problem. That's what the A-Class does in a nutshell. So sorry for the long winded introduction on that, but it's important you know what this review is about. It's not like our typical reviews, more about performance and stuff. This is about interaction with UI. But before we go into the details, comparing it, say, to the previous A, it's not as much of a revolutionary design as that car was. If we go back into the past and we look at the previous more boxy A classes, 
you can see the huge leap that the last generation was. Whereas this is more of a grown up A-Class. The rear doors are a bit larger, certainly the aperture to get in, which we'll see. And generally the car has grown a bit and it looks a bit more sophisticated. So the front end has what we call this Predator face. If you're thinking AMG straight away, you can really see how much the AMG design language is now filtered into the Mercedes-Benz standard story as well. Yes, this is an AMG line. Even if you look at a normal sport, which isn't AMG, you still get this Predator face. The Predator is this long, wide, and really low grille, almost wedge-shaped the whole car, giving it a really, really mean sort of shark nose look. And these lights will remind you of the lights that you might have seen in the AMG GT. Now they're on the A and the new CLS, and generally, you've got a really aggressive looking front. It wouldn't be wrong to say this car was probably designed firstly in mind with the AMG A45 or the A50, whatever they might call it, in mind. Then this was sort of reduced from the proportions of the more AMG version, because it looks very sporty and you really have to see it in person to kind of appreciate that. Coming onto the side of the car, this is where you start to see the A-Class becoming a bit more grown up You've got less of the curvy lines that the previous one had, although I thought those were really handsome. This makes the car look a lot more luxury. And I think that actually translates into the driving and the way that the car handles, but we'll get onto that later. So less lines, a lot more sophisticated, more grown up is the way that Mercedes-Benz are describing it. The wheels on the AMG line, unfortunately, these are the only wheels that you can get. And I'm gonna have a little bit of a moan about this now. I don't know whether it's temporary, it's only at the time of the recording of this video. You can only get these wheels, you can't get night pack in the UK, you've got the choice of perhaps four to five paints maximum. Inside you've only got one interior choice and all of this is a real shame because in Europe you get a whole host of different choices. I'm going to show you the multi spokes that you can get in the car for example, which to me just change the entire look of the thing into something so sporty looking and truly AMG line like. Even if you had the night pack on, how, be how much better do these particular wheels look with the night pack? And then with the interiors, you get red, you get sand, you get a whole host of different options that you can have. I really hope it's just a temporary thing with MBUK and that eventually over the course of the next 12 months, will be getting more options in at the moment. Other than that, this three quarter view, it's probably my favorite view of the car because you get a really good look at the side. You get that predator face. You can see like the longer rear door with the bigger aperture. I think it's definitely bigger because the old A-Class was a bit of a pain to get in and out of for passengers. This just looks more of a luxury car in that regard, certainly. But looking at it from that angle, I always start to think, what would this thing look like in full-on AMG guys and I start to have my brain imagining different things like the wheels, the front end with the Panamericana grille lopped off the AMG GTR, maybe a big wing, a lower car and the track mode that we've seen the car running around in on the Nürburgring. That could be one hell of a car and I can't wait for the unveil next year. We should have asked future Chewy about that, shouldn't we? Oh well. Oh, now the rear quarter. There's always some part of modern cars now that I'm reviewing that have a controversial side. These lights in the A-Class probably have been one of the most controversial points and not just the lights, I guess it's the whole rear end. Um, I'm gonna show you guys a bunch of views of the rear now. You can come to your own decision on whether you like it or not. I personally feel just like I said with the CLS, you need to see this in person to first judge it and I think we need to see the full-on AMGs before we make our decision. But I don't know, I think they're kind of nice. The, the good thing about them, definitely, that we can all agree on is the 3D shapes inside. They look really, really premium, and it's something that sets the A-Class apart, certainly from the last car, and all the other Mercedes apart from the CLS at the moment. So those look really good. Now the shape of them, they've been compared to all kinds of cars, and I know I'm gonna get the comments in the comments section in YouTube now, I can just see it coming, all sorts. Uh, of comparisons. But I think this is a point that's perhaps gonna fade away over time because you're gonna have more and more Mercedes following along the same lines in terms of the lights. Certainly the CLS has shown us that. Other spy shots of future cars also hinting towards this. And I'm predicting a couple of years from now, max, the lights won't even be a talking point. But certainly go and see them in person for yourself. 
um, the rest of the car from the rear, I can really see the potential of the AMG because it's already really quite wide. You've got the fake sort of air intakes on the rear, which look very sporty. The lower diffuser with the double pipes look really, really good. And generally, it's got quite a muscular shoulder line on the rear. And I think the AMG is gonna take big advantage of this because even in this A200, guys, it looks really wide and quite mean from the rear. The only thing that gives it away is the width of the tires. Otherwise, you'd be convinced that this is quite a powerful hot hatch. But enough about the exterior. The exciting part of the new A-Class is actually inside. So inside the new A-Class, it would be remiss of me not to talk about the new design that hits you straight away because it is such a step forward from the last one. If you remember the last car, there was a lot of complaints about how it looked like the front dashboard was designed by one person and the doors by somewhere else because the two things just didn't match together at all. Whereas this is a lot more like the design you'll see in the S Coupe or the S63 cab, where the trim flows all around the front of the car, links to the door really nicely. Of course, you've got the newer air vents as well, which are like in the AMG GT63 four door. So they're illuminated, they've got ambient lighting. This whole front of the car is just so, so premium compared to what we had before. It's a big, big jump forward. The structure of it is still reminiscent of the previous A-Class. As I said, like with the outside, it's not gone out of its way to make the inside structurally massively different. So you've still got the three vents in the middle like you had in the previous A-Class, another round vent on each side. It's all quite similar, but much better. The other thing I noticed straight away, all the switches, everything, every single switch is brand new. Even the the little switches you have here, everything is new, feels really premium, apart from these stalks, which they feel really quite, quite flimsy. And I've shown them to a few people and everyone's come back thinking, oh God, we think we might break that if we pull the gear lever or the indicator too hard. So not too sure about those. They work perfectly well. They just look like they're gonna break. Um, the, all the window switches are brand new. Even the dynamic select switch here, that's brand new. The only thing I can see that matches another Mercedes is the steering wheel and these air vents, and they would be out of something really new like the new CLS or the new GT63. So this is, as I said, it's a car that almost like it's come from the future. It's something that you won't see other cars have for a good few years now, because most cars in the MB lineup have just been facelifted. Now, of course, the first thing that hits you is the brand new steering wheel the two digital screens in front, and the brand new trackpad. And those three things together form your physical way of interacting with the car via touch. So you've got touch buttons on the steering wheel, which I've extensively showed in the past in other reviews. This screen is for the first time touch, which I think would probably end up being your last resort because surprisingly, this touchpad, which I was so fearful of when I first saw it in shots in the E63 wagon, I thought it was gonna be terrible because the old touchpad was, it's not useful at all. It's, it doesn't feel like it would be a safe thing to use while I'm driving on the road. Whereas this, A, it's much larger, it's got a matte feel to it, and most importantly, it's got haptic feedback. And what that means is when you change from different parts of the UI, you get haptic feedback on the touchpad and you know that you've moved to another option and that, really promotes safety. You know exactly how many clicks you've made. And the best way I'd describe it is like the old command turn wheel. When you turned it one click, that's what one swipe here feels like. So it's very natural if you're used to that in the Mercedes Benz, you're gonna be quite at home. I'm surprised, I thought I'd hate this. I was gonna have a moan about it, but really well done here, guys. But, but even though you've got three brilliant ways of interacting with the car, that's not groundbreaking. What is groundbreaking is how well the voice system works within this car. So for the first time ever, guys, let's say, hi, Mercedes. How can I help you? How are you? Best day of my life so far. I'm feeling quite hot. Can you reduce the temperature to the lowest? Temperature set to minimum. Can you make the ambient lighting blue? Okay, I'm changing the colour. Amazing, and now look, 
it's just all gone blue rather than me having to go through all the options because ambient lighting is quite deep inside the system as it is in the E-Class. So that is just with one simple command. So let's try something else now. Hey Mercedes. How can I help you? What do you think of BMW and Audi? They are nice. I like seeing them through my rear view mirror. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Hey Mercedes. How can I help you? Take me to Costa Coffee. Please select an entry. I love you. Hey, you're not so bad yourself. So all of these commands that I'm using at the moment, I've not read a user manual, um, I've not been given anything. I'm just talking to it completely normally, trying to discover what things I can do. Now I've had this car for about two weeks and I think it's one of the first cars that I've had since ever where if I go back into an older car, I'm going to feel weird because I can access and do things so quickly in this car. A good example is the other day I was taking someone to Heathrow Airport and normally we'd have to go into POIs, either look for the nearest airport through the list or you know type in the, the name physically. Whereas with this car, all I had to say was take me to Heathrow Terminal 3 and immediately it said starting route guidance. So for example, I'll do it now. Hey Mercedes. How can I help you? Take me to Heathrow Terminal 3. The route to Heathrow Airport Terminals 1, 2 and 3 Hounslow Cosmopolitan Way is being calculated. And it's literally as simple as that. You don't need to do any messing around in terms of looking for stuff, which is why I said, although the touch bits are great, you don't need to use them for the main functions. You can just talk to the car and it does it in an intelligent way. If you have someone slightly elderly who's using the car, not so much used to technology, the old Lingotronic system would have been a big no-no. Whereas this, as long as they understand the first command, which is, hey Mercedes, How can the I rest you? should come completely naturally, one hopes. And this is a great system then that can then be built upon because the possibilities are limitless. And this is why I was saying that voice is more important in the car than it ever was in the smartphone. Now I know there are going to be people in the comments, I can imagine it even now, saying, oh, but it's, it's just like Siri, it's just a voice assistant, but you need to try this because you guys are probably the same ones who said that about the voice assistant AI coming into phones as well. This is really, really good. It's very safe for when we're driving cars. We don't have to mess around with all this stuff, look at screens. We can keep our eyes where it matters on the road and let the AI do the smart thinking and navigate around this great UI. So the car actually has machine learning. So for example, if you like to call your parents at a certain time of day, every day or, or on a certain day, then the car will learn that over time and a notification will pop up saying, do you want to call mum and dad, for example, or for a coffee addict like me, the Costa navigation will probably prop up in the morning to take me to, get a, to go get a coffee. So it learns this stuff, it learns your voice, it learns accents, it learns your habits, and it tries to cater that to you, but then that will be set in your driver profile. So if you have someone else who you're sharing the car with, or you have someone come as a guest, you can turn the second profile on, then the car reconfigures itself for that person's use, and it's not your settings that are being used. So the car is then tailored completely to you, which is really awesome. And I'm not exaggerating when I say I think every luxury automaker is going to follow the trend of this A-Class now. I mean, this bloodies the nose of the S-Class, which is the top of this Mercedes-Benz family. The E-Class's UI was recently done. This kills that as well. This is so much better. I could jump from the E-Class back into my GLC, back into my Black Series, and I won't really miss the newer cars because the main function's basically the same. The way I interact with the car is basically the same. That's not the case with this. Now in terms of tech, things have gone even further in the A where you can now get the head-up display like you get in the C, E and the S class. You can also get self-driving options in terms of drive pilot, lane assist, etc. This car has lane assist in it. So it's becoming more and more advanced, much more like the S class in terms of the tech available to it. Now some interesting tidbits around the car. You've got USB-C ports, which is quite interesting. Um, I have these on my MacBook, which I use to edit all the videos. 
poor removed before race. I've never seen them on anything else. And to see them on a brand new Mercedes, so ahead of its time, back in the day, cars didn't used to have USB ports and we had those silly plugs that then went into USBs in Mercedes. So they're upping the game to remain relevant in terms of tech, which is cool. But you've also got smartphone integration in terms of Apple CarPlay, uh, the Android version as well. And what is interesting at WWDC this year, the Worldwide Developers Conference that Apple held, we're going to have Google Maps and Waze come onto Apple CarPlay. So that thing that was much more of a gimmick before is going to become a lot more useful for us lot who actually like using Google Maps and Waze in terms of navigation. So the A-Class is all pre-wired ready for that change coming later on. So this is going to be something that we really miss in cars that don't have these features. So the UI is quite different now in the A-Class. You've got different levels. You've got a first row initially that's got your phone, navigation, normal options. It's quite interesting actually. The navigation uh, graphic here, although you're just swiping through a menu, actually shows a faded version of the place you're actually in at the moment behind it in terms of its maps. And it's these little attention to detail that I really love in a car. So you've got all your, your normal navigation bits here. Then you've got something called themes. So you've got a more sportier one. If I click that, it will take me to the engine display um, and the car's lighting will suddenly turn yellow, as you can see in the video. And again, you can go back, you can change the theme to something else immediately. Um, efficiency is one, which then I assume it's gonna turn the car green. Yes, it's turning the car green, as you can see. So you've got these different themes inside here, which are quite interesting. They're immediately accessible there. Ambient lighting has got all the options you have in the E and the S class, even some more. Uh, one nice one was color mix, which I'll show you what that looks like at night. These are just some stunning, stunning things, especially the ambient lighting at night. It really shames something like the current C-Class, which hasn't got this. Facelift does have it though, so that'll bring it a little bit more up to date. The use of apps now in MBUX is a lot more exp uh, extensive, sorry, not expensive. Um, you've got Mercedes Me, which links up to all the stuff you have on the Me app on your phone. So you've got your usual fuel level, locating a vehicle, sending navigation information, etc. You can do all that on your phone. Um, but you've also got stuff like, there's an app here called Hungry. There's one called Coffee for people like me. You've got Hotel. And these are just shortcuts to get you straight into those POIs and whatnot. So that's quite cool. The use of apps is actually useful where it was pretty much useless in old cars. Now, although the E-Class recently had quite a big upgrade in terms of the screens in front of you, every few months we've seen more and more upgrades come to this digital driver unit. And when I drove the new M5 recently, I was quite dis disappointed because it wasn't that customizable. And that might have been down to me being biased due to the review of this car, which I was filming at the same time, because this is just so customizable. Before, whereas in the E-Class, you could only change the dial on the right. Now, all you have to do is flick this touch controller on the steering wheel to the left, and you can change the left dial as well to clock, um, consumption, uh, you've got your trip itinerary and you've got radio. You can change that dial as well. And then you've got the same options as the E had on the right. So stuff like, again, consumption, eco display, navigation in terms of your maps, having them there, G-Force, and then the driving assistance bit. And of course, you've still got the middle section where you can have stuff like trip meter. You can have even full screen navigation now, much like the Audi driver zone, which I always liked so much and I thought, it was the best in its class. So there's so much that you can customize now here. It's not even just having classic sport and the brand new understated display, which only shows you bare minimum on both screens, which is really nice, by the way. But it goes beyond that. It lets you customize. It lets you make the car yours. And I think that's what this MBUX system is all about. Jumping into the back of the new A, the legroom seems very similar to the previous A class, even though the car looks longer. But you have got a lot more headroom, I think, so that's definitely improved. Um, the seats are quite comfortable. They're not too upright. And you've got these seats in the front kind of curving towards your face, which is a little bit claustrophobic. But the aperture of actually getting in the car is bigger, I think. Um, and certainly, if I show you the boot now, way, way bigger. If you had prams and you tried to use the previous A-Class, you people, you parents out there will know what I'm talking about. It was a bit of a nightmare to get that kind of width of thing into the previous car. This one, a lot wider. You haven't got the lights encroaching that space to get into the boot. So that's a big plus as well. 
But now that we've discovered that, I want to talk just a little bit about this A200 in terms of how it rides, what this engine is like. So let's go out on a drive on this car and see what the new A-Class is like. Is it a proper Mercedes-Benz in terms of driving as well? So before I talk about what this new A200 rides like, I want to break down what it means to be a modern Merc. So in the Benz family, now we have four stages of different types of cars, and it was best shown recently by Chief Design Officer Gordon Wagner when he showed four different sculptures. One which kind of looked like a speedster, like the Flash, was of course AMG. Then you had the, the rose gold sculpture, which reminds you of the Maybach 6 Cabriolet with its rose gold features. So that was the Maybach sculpture, very upright, very majestic. Then you had the EQ sculpture, which was kind of a technological looking robotic type structure, um, almost 3D printed, I guess. And that gave you the idea of electric cars. And then there was the pure MB one, which was a elegant, head-turning, curvaceous lady. And that is really what a pure Merc is all about. It's all about being pure luxury, a head-turner, and that idea of what a luxury car should be. So when you drive a modern MB, what you need to be thinking of is not a sporty car. It's not meant to be a sporty hatchback. What this car is, it's a luxurious Mercedes-Benz. So the first impression I got from this car when I drove it was, wow, this is really, really similar to the new E-Class or the CLS that I recently tried on the channel. And that is a really high compliment for a small little hatchback like the A-Class. Um, one criticism of the previous gen car was that the ride was just not up to scratch. Whereas this rides like a luxury saloon and it really wasn't something that I was expecting out of this car. I thought it was gonna be really similar to the previous one, but this is great because that's what you want a daily A-Class like the A200 to be. You want it to be as luxurious as Mercedes-Benz, as cosseting as possible. So the suspension is really good. You guys have seen me tackle these roads in all kinds of cars with different suspensions. And this is as comfortable to me and I'm not bumping around as much as I usually do. And these aren't the best roads in the world, as I've said many times before. Um, the steering is quite light, uh, but then it's not completely uncommunicative, if that makes sense. But it is what you would expect of a more kind of cosseting car. But again, these aren't things that I'm really concentrating on when I'm thinking about a daily like the A200. Now, what is the 200? Well, it's a four cylinder engine with 163 brake horsepower. So not a huge amount of power. And the engine is actually a Renault-Nissan based engine. So that partnership between Daimler and Renault and Nissan. Now, of course, as soon as anybody hears it's Renault-Nissan, they're all like, oh, no, no, no. And I kind of tackled this, this idea about engines being supplied from other companies when we tackled the DB11 review uh, and it had the AMG V8. And again, the same point stands here. Engines are a tool for a purpose. And this A200 four cylinder, it does the job. It's, it's not noisy, um, it gives power when you need it. Yes, it's not the most exciting engine in the world if you put your foot down, but it's got enough sort of low level grunt to do the daily work well enough. Um, I'd certainly take this over a diesel because diesels are on the way out in the UK and Europe. decently raspy actually it's not that bad the engine but there is an a250 available as well that car has got 221 brake horsepower it's got something around 80 pound foot more of torque 0 to 60 is almost three seconds quicker at 6.4 compared to the eight seconds on this the gearbox in this is of course the automatic seven speed it hasn't benefited from the new nine speeds that you'll find in the newer luxury mercedes cars and indeed in the AMGs, but I suspect you'll get the nine speed. Well, I hope you'll get the nine speed in the A35 and certainly the A45 going forward, but it's a good gearbox. It always was a good one, the modern seven speed that Mercedes used. So uh, not really a talking point. Taking the car into sport from comfort. And of course you get a more eager automatic setup. Um, 
the car sounds all right actually it sounds quite raspy in this 200 petrol form um, quite like it and, it and it has enough power as I said for the daily jobs it's pretty good so to conclude just on ride and performance um, this A200 is really really quite good for a daily car it's got that inherent characteristic of a Mercedes-Benz of just being really good at chewing up miles so as I said when I was doing the interior you could go into themes and go to experience so I've hit experience now and suddenly the whole car has gone yellow as you can see I've got the engine data here I've got the sports screen in front and suddenly the whole look and ambience of the car has changed and perhaps that's one time where the black interior is a plus now if I go into efficiency as I showed you earlier now I've got consumption there I've got my trip and consumption and eco display all in the front here all the car lights have gone green again it's a big change and that's just from one click over here which is brilliant so let's try some more let's go into trip and that brings up I've got the navigation here I've got a whole full screen example of the consumption and the eco display and the entire trip in front of me right. now let's talk about the technology available to you while you're driving because for me that's what the a-class is all about it's about interaction between the driver and the car so a really good example of this is at the moment I'm kind of running out of fuel as you can see so I'm gonna try something with the system now hey Mercedes how can I help you can you find me the cheapest fuel station around here now there you go, there's another completely natural thing I asked and the car showed me a list of um, fuel station options not listed in distance from me but listed in which one was cheaper. Now how good is that as a, just a natural way of interacting with your car without having to mess around with your phone maps or trying to find POIs in the system here. All you had to do was ask it and it immediately gave you what you wanted. Now one absolutely awesome thing that I wanted to show you guys while I was driving is an option on this car which is called augmented reality navigation AR navigation and this is not just a gimmick this is something that solves an age-old problem so I want to show you something now we're gonna to navigate to this car's home which is Mercedes-Benz and Milton Keynes and I'm gonna show you how the car uses augmented reality so there's a camera in front of the car that shows you for example the name of the road you're on with 3D graphics. It gives you 3D graphics overlaid onto the real-time footage for a 3D arrow to show you which actual road, for example, or junction on a roundabout you have to take. And that solves an age-old problem that we always have, all of us do, with navigations where it's telling you to turn somewhere and you end up taking the wrong exit because you're not quite sure this might be so many exits or a few close together. This solves that age-old problem because with the augmented reality, it's pointing to the actual road you've got to get off and then you won't make that mistake and add God knows how many minutes to your journey. And this is what I love in terms of bringing the correct technology into a device. It's not just shoehorning every bit of kit that you can into a car just because you can. I still have an issue with there being a browser in this, for example. Never ever used a browser in the car. I never will. There are better devices to use it in a much more safe way. If you're going to use the browser, you have to stop the car anyway. So why the hell wouldn't I use my phone as an example? But the augmented reality navigation, yeah, that's what I want in a car. I want the AI to be smarter. So I want the whole MBUX system to be as brilliant as it is when I'm talking to it. This is the tech that I want to see developed and it is a huge huge step forward in this A-Class. In conclusion I think it's really like the jump from Nokia to iPhone and I think you're going to see every manufacturer taking bits from this and trying to develop their own versions going forward. As a car it feels like it's a miniaturized version of an E-Class but it's got more tech. It's definitely strides and strides ahead of the E and the S in terms of interaction and the technology available in MBUX. I really don't know having used this how long are customers who've who've seen this system going to be willing to wait for it in the C and the E and the S and all the other big cars. I'm thinking they're going to have to roll it out quite quick 
I'm sure the basis is there in terms of the screens and whatnot. Yes, the other ones aren't touch screen. But this is such a jump forward that surely you can't not do that. This car makes me really, really excited for the AMG versions. Can you imagine the types of themes and graphics and whatnot you'll be able to set up in an AMG, including customization of the suspension? We've seen shots of that car sitting in a really, really low track mode. Um, it's going to be so customizable. And then, of course, the interior will be a notch above this. I hope they have a carbon option because this trim inside here, which is aluminium at the moment, would look absolutely stunning, just like the S63 with carbon going all around it. And from what we've heard, the top of the range A45 is going to have over 400 brake horsepower, which means per litre that's pushing out more horsepower than the McLaren Senna. So <laughs> the horsepower wars are on in the hot hatch side. The next RS3 is really going to have to bring the game up for the A45 and it's really exciting times for us guys as petrol heads. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the little filmy intro we did that we've been doing more often recently in our videos and the review on the A-Class itself. I hope I managed to bring across to you just what a game changer the interaction with the car is in this. Um, so as you always do, please do like and share this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And of course, We'll see you again soon.